Hi, I'm Marco Rendina. I am the managing director of the European Fashion Heritage Association. Um, I won't go into the details of all the benefits that opening up cultural heritage content can offer to GLAMs, uh, like increased visibility, a better reputation, the advance of the institutional mission, or, or even better brand licensing. I, I wanted to, to stress instead one of the key features that uh, Open Glam can foster in relation to open knowledge, which is a universal participation. Uh, cultural institutions constantly struggle to attract and establish lasting and, and meaningful uh, relationship with their audiences. Uh, and crowdsourcing and citizen science initiatives are becoming more and more popular in the cultural heritage sector. Well, I, I think it's clear that the Open Glam model is the best suited to foster and better exploit these participative approaches, uh, actively engaging uh, citizens with their heritage. Uh, what Glams preserve is our common past and indeed our, our present and future. If, it, if it's easy to access and reuse, then it can be more easily integrated in school programs. It can become something to enjoy, not only to, to learn for a purpose, it can really become something embedded in our daily life. To, to, to sum up, I, I really believe that open access to cultural heritage content can foster participation, civic engagement, and pave the road for a more inclusive and conscious society. So what are the barriers to, to, to Open Glam? I would say that in Open Glam, we have few risks rather than real barriers. Uh, if we set aside uh, copyright, of course, which is a real conversation killer here. Um, the major risk I see for Open Glam is the ethical one. And it is to allow content to be superficially exploited without, uh, without acknowledging its origins uh, and engaging with it. Uh, the use of materials held in archives, museums, and, and, and libraries, especially for commercial purposes, without recognizing historical roots, communities, and above all, without giving the right credit to those related to this content, is unfortunately a common practice, especially in the fashion realm, and, and wrong altogether, of course. Fashion is indeed one of the most powerful visual signifier of identity, uh, individual as well as, as of communities. Uh, so I think we need rules to overcome the tendency to grab and go, not by hiding or locking up content, but by placing it in, in the right context and recognizing its value. Uh, sharing for caring, basically. Uh, this is the only way to protect open content and allow people to enjoy it and, and learn from it. You asked to share something that someone else told me uh, about uh, Open Glam that opened my eye. Uh, I don't have an actual catchy quote, uh, but I remember that a few years ago, I read a very interesting paper from uh, Effie Capsalis uh, titled the, the Impact of Open Access on Glams. The paper was referring to another study from the Mellon Foundation, I think, uh, which found that among the museums studied, none that enforced copyright restriction made any uh, significant profit against their expenditures. And in the very first page of the paper, in the executive summary, there was a, a very clear and simple quote from uh, that study that struck me. And, and this was saying, uh, real and perceived gains far outweigh the real and perceived losses for every museum in the study that has made a transition to an open access approach. Of course, I suggest to read the full paper where this was thoroughly argued, but I think this quote says it all very clearly. And, and it was a quite powerful realization for me at the time. A personal message to those hesitating to open up collection. Um, well, re resistance is futile. Uh, we are steadily going towards what Pierigi Sacco defined as the culture 3.0 model, where the distinction between uh, cultural producers and consumers is becoming more and more blurred. Digital technologies and platforms are profoundly changing the power dynamics behind cultural production. 
uh, they are empowering people, allowing them to embed culture in their everyday lives in proactive and creative ways, not anymore just as passive consumers. So as a cultural institution, you can either ride this change and have an active and leading role in this new scenario, opening up your content and fostering its reuse, or you will simply be overtaken. Uh, prioritize openness and, and sharing will allow you first to fulfill your public mission, of course, uh, to stay relevant, to increase your visibility and your reputation, and to better engage with your audiences. Uh, starting a dialogue with them, co-creating with them, and at last, giving a positive, long-lasting contribution to our society. So, what else I have to say? Uh, do not hesitate. Open up. 